guys, it's Sunny. So welcome back. Um, if you're new to watching me, um, I am a professional ballroom dancer and I like to share with you from an insider's perspective um, what goes on in the real ballroom dance world. So um, one of the most common questions um, I hear is how do I become a professional dancer? Um, and that can have a wide variety of definitions. Does that mean being like an elite level competitor? Does that usually people mean just how do I become a dance teacher? Um, so that's what I'm going to address today. Um, so before I delve into this, I want to clarify there are many different ways to go about this. Um, and I'm not saying which is the best way. There are pros and cons to any way you go about it. So I'm just going to share the background so you can make an informed decision if that's kind of uh, a future that you'd like to see for yourself. Okay. Um, and so today I'm going to share the fastest way, okay, to um, become a professional dancer or a teacher in this case. Okay. Um, so most professionals um, and teachers are just social dancers, okay? They're not going to be able to dance like you would see on TV. Um, so the dance teacher would be able to, you know, master maybe six dances or so um, and, you know, successfully be able to teach a wedding couple, for example. Um, and the majority of people who initially come in your door as a, as a teacher are beginners. So they're really happy with that lesson. Um, so, um, it doesn't necessarily, this route doesn't necessarily refine your skill to a really high level, but, um, it can be fun and rewarding and you'll definitely be able to teach people to learn to dance. Um, also, do you need skill to be a busy dance teacher? No, you don't. Um, it certainly doesn't hurt, but, um, Regardless of your skill, you do need people skills, okay? So regardless of your technique, your mastery of the dances, I have seen high-level elite competitive pros not be as successful as me, and they certainly deserve it. They did great in competition, but there does need to be a degree of um, professionalism and the ability to communicate information, okay? Um, so the fastest route, again, we're going to talk about the fastest route. I'm not necessarily saying the best route, but the fastest is to work for a chain studio, like a franchise of Arthur Murray, Fred Astaire, etc. Um, honestly, they recruit most of their teachers from the incoming clientele that they get off of their cheap Groupon or whatever that they're offering. Um, and so if you go in to redeem that Groupon, they think, honestly, you're, you're talented, you're usually young and, and very attractive. They know that you can sell stuff and people want to come back to you for a dance lesson, in which case you can um, sign up there to learn how to teach. Okay. So what happens, you usually would take private lessons or maybe a tiny instructor's group class where you would learn to teach and learn to sell um, and usually the instruction level, your knowledge level, only precedes the students that you're teaching by a few weeks. So say if I'm going to uh, teach a, a natural turn I, or a, a closed chain step in waltz, well, I would learn that a week or two or three before I would go on to teach the students. Um, so I'll give it, have a story for you related to this. Um, I went to a, uh, a friend of mine took lessons at Arthur Murray and he wanted to surprise me by learning how to dance. So he didn't tell me he was going there until he already signed up for this big package. So he really wanted to take my partner and I to one of his dances. And I was a little concerned about that because at that point I was a championship level dancer. Um, and I knew realistically my skill level would be exponentially beyond what the teachers there would be and I uh, didn't want to upset anyone or take business away or anything like that um, and after, and I danced two dances there at socially as poorly as I could and they actually kicked me out but anyway 
Um, and that was open to the public, but you know, this skill level was not where we are. But anyway, before I danced those social dances, they made this big to do with this social dance about their professional show, their champions. And they called this couple out to the floor that was their, you know, elite level pros. And I had just competed with this couple that weekend, like the day before at a local USA dance comp in bronze where they placed dead last. Actually, I wasn't open at that point, but they had competed in bronze and placed dead last, but they presented themselves as the, you know, championship elite pros at the studio. Maybe they were the, the most elite dancers there, but that should give you an indication of their um, actual abilities and just kind of learning right in advance of their students. Um, on the upside, it's very regimented. It's easy to learn. They have a very uh, kind of strict way. You teach this figure, followed by this figure, followed by this figure. It's kind of a one size fits all teaching thing. So you don't need to be really experienced to effectively teach people. And it's absolutely rewarding to see your students dance when after, you know, just um, regurgitate what you just taught them in a way that they're finding to be joyful right after you taught them. That's very rewarding. So I'm not saying it's a bad way to go. It's just a little different. It's unique. Um, and, um, before I share some of the downsides, I do want to clarify, I am painting here with a broad brush. There is no way that you can, every day single dance studio is going to run that, um, identically. There are always an exception to the rule, even within a franchise where they have very regimented, um, laid out, you know, in books, the, this is the way you teach or you run things. There's always a variation. So I am speaking in generalizations here. Um, just to communicate in a really synced, succinct way how this um, learning to teach or learning to turn pro method works, okay? Um, so these are generalities. But I do want to share uh, some potential really ugly sides um, of this um, path to becoming a professional. Um, so number one, usually it involves a lot of unpaid work. So you're required to show up to the social dances and... Um, kind of be a, an unpaid dance host for all these people in an effort to sell more lessons to them and ingratiate them to make the dance experience more positive for them. Because often when you start dancing, it's difficult to break in and get people to ask you to dance. So that's kind of part of your job, okay? Um, often they have you sign a non-compete, which means, okay, I will not work within... Um, I had a friend of mine who did this and she ended up having to move somewhere else for a ridiculous amount of time, like three years. She wasn't allowed to teach within like a 60 mile radius of this studio where she taught. Um, here's the good news. These are rarely legally enforceable. Um, here's why. Many states, um, they basically have laws that prevent companies from, quote unquote, preventing individuals from being able to work for a living and support themselves. And often the non-competes are interpreted this way and, and states want people to work. They don't want you to be on the public dole. So even if you do sign that non-compete and you, you wanna teach nearby because the conditions are unbearable, um, you know, at, ask a lawyer, it's worth the investment. It probably isn't enforceable anyway and you can do what you want. Um, obviously you wouldn't be allowed to solicit your clientele, but honestly they can track you down easily on social media. That's really not a problem. And I do agree. It's, it's unethical. If you gain a clientele in a studio, even if I wasn't employed there, even if I didn't have a non-compete, I would never solicit people out of there. Um, I, but they are going to track you down if they like you. So, um, that is an option. Um, Next up, they often require hardcore sales approach. I am totally would never be comfortable. I don't even sell people less of the lesson, let alone some huge package that I know it is, in my opinion, not worth that price. So um, that is part of the training, though, on the upside. So they will teach you how to do that. Um, so they're going to spend a lot of time focusing on the business side, so the dance side. There's an upside to that, you know, not a lot of people naturally possess that asset. Maybe you haven't, you know, you're not comfortable with that. They will make you comfortable with that so that you could see that as an upside. Um, they, the, so again, the skill is limited. Um, also the long, because the skill is limited, you, there's a little bit more of a limited long-term income potential, okay? Because regardless of how charismatic you are, um, 
you can only charge, you know, so much for your skill level. So, um, this route is not ultimately going to make you the most money, um, but initially it'll be the fastest um, and won't cost much out of pocket. So that's definitely an upside. So anyway, I'm pushing that 10 minute mark. I'm going to cut this off, but I have several more opportunities, ways you can turn pro and I'll, I'll cover that um, super soon. So if you like that content, you're interested in learning more, press that thumbs up for my button for me. Please press subscribe. Not YouTube notifies me with every single subscription I get. I get so excited um, and I'm not monetized at all. I truly get it just because it um, makes me happy when I see that you enjoy what, what I'm sharing with you. So feel free to ask questions. Feel free to share your own experiences and I will see you soon. Bye guys. Have a great day.